Good afternoon. Uh, welcome back to Think Tech Hawaii. Uh, I'm your host on Likeable Science, Ethan Allen. And thank you for joining us this lovely Friday afternoon. Today on Likeable Science, we have a very special guest, uh, State Senator Glenn Wakai. Welcome, Glenn. Thank you. Thank you for being here. You're such a likable host on <laughs> Likeable Science. <laughs> well, we, we, we try to keep it uh, light and happy here. Uh, and it's, it's guys like you who are helping make science and technology really happen and be, be a bigger part of all of our lives every day. So. Oh, it's, it's, it's the future. <laughs> it is. It is indeed. And that's, that's what we're here to talk about, right, is, is some, some of your ideas and some of the ideas that are brewing around in the legislature about how to bring more technology to Hawaii, how to develop our own technology, how to, and where to do this. And you have a, a, a thing that you call your 4A economic plan, right? Yes. Which is um, aerospace aquaculture, alternative energy, and Aloha Stadium, right? Yes. And you, would you like me to talk about yeah, that? Yeah, let's jump right into well, this. If you don't mind, I want to just take one step back sure. um, about um, you know, just economically. We built our, our, our two biggest economic engines of the past are our plantation, right? That's what brought right. many of our families here. And then now it's tourism. And I just don't think that that's going to be sustainable, that we need to pivot from a society that uses this muscle to a society that uses this muscle, there because this has limited capability. This has infinite opportunities. Absolutely. And it's with that mindset that we've pivoted towards um, the triple A economic plan, but more uh, generally for the idea of an 80-80 plan, which okay. is to create 80,000 new tech innovation type jobs with a minimum salary of $80,000. Cool. Because what we have now is we have a lot of menial jobs, and that's why we see so many of our neighbors who have one, two, three jobs right. trying to pay their rent because you're cap cobbling together $25,000 a year jobs to pay your rent. Wouldn't it be better if we provided the pathway for meaningful jobs that pay north of $80,000. Right, so again, that's, that's the, the effort we're trying to get to. And so how do, you, how do we get there? Um, I, I'm a believer that we have to change the dynamics and the, the thought process for our neighbors who look at the price of, of paradise, right? And the mm -hmm. price of paradise is our kind of resignation that Hawaii is junk, Hawaii is expensive, shipping, energy costs, all of these things make mm -hmm. us very bad, a, a, a terrible place for us to, to do business. Mm -hmm. And I want to shift that to the profits in, in paradise, not the price of paradise, but the profits right. here. And when we do that, that's a mind shift of looking at our, at our isolation as no longer a detriment, but how in the world can we be world leaders in certain areas? Um, so that's where the four A's come in. Uh, the first A being aquaculture. It baffles me that in Hawaii, 70% of the fish we consume is imported. Right. That is a ridiculous proposition. P particularly since Hawaiians traditionally farm fish. They were doing aquaculture centuries ago on, mm -hmm. on quite an extensive scale. Right. Fish farms right. uh, were plentiful. Right. Uh, fishing and then the, the, the ocean was, was our the bread and right. basket for Hawaii. Absolutely. And going back to the idea of us importing fish, that would be similar to somehow folks in Nebraska importing cows. Right. I, <laughs> I highly doubt that that would be a model that they want right. to right. embrace but we continue to ignore the plentiful resources that the ocean provides us. Right. And I'm a big fan of agriculture, right? Agriculture was actually the first economic engine for, for this state, right. but agriculture has its inherent conflicts. You mm -hmm. need land, you need water. We need more housing, we need more retail, we need more business development, and if you have a limited terrestrial plane to play on, then right. you can have all of these co conflicts. Right. And we fail to look just offshore at the infinite possibilities of the ocean for food sustainability and economic development. Exactly, it's a, it's a sort of it's a new frontier out there to, to do aquaculture. It's it's tomorrow's agriculture, well, right? True. It's the old frontier right. that we've right. failed to kind of acknowledge and take advantage of. So yes, it's it's new because we're reinventing the right. old, and uh, getting back to. Uh, the sustainability portion of it. I mean, you can bring, uh, grow seaweed, ogo, right? It could mm -hmm. become our vegetable, as well as the, the meat side of things, the crustaceans, mm -hmm. the mussels, the fish that we could be uh, mm -hmm. cultivating here. We don't pay enough attention to aquaculture in the state. Absolutely, and, and there are thousands and thousands of jobs in that, in that 
area, uh, learning about the ocean science, mm -hmm. learning how to farm this, the, the seaweed efficiently, what are, the, what are the characteristics, what kinds of water flow do you need, how do you best sort of house it as it were. Yeah, no, yeah, it, yeah. you're absolutely right. And it's also taking the, the Hawaiian model, the fish pond, and bringing in 21st century ideas in creating these fish pens, these global position fish pens in which we have the fish swimming around, right? right? It's no longer a pig pen on, a, on the land. It's, right. a, it's a pen, global position pen out in the ocean that right. will keep uh, our kempachi in, in uh, an area and so we can feed them. And utilizing the ocean uh, as a real opportunity and, and playground yeah. for us. Absolutely, absolutely. And all the more reason to be sure we know a lot about the ocean, keep our ocean waters in good shape so we can exploit that, yeah. Yep, exactly. Right. And the other A would be alternative energy. And right. anybody who's lived in Hawaii more than a day knows the opportunities here, right? right. The, the wind, the rain, not the rain, the wind, maybe rain one right. day, the wind, um, the sun, ocean uh, movements, uh, ocean thermal dynamics, yeah, right. uh, all sorts of opportunities here. And we have the highest cost of electricity in the nation at 33, 35 cents a kilowatt hour. And in the rest of the nation, it's about 12 or so cents. We can't compete mm. uh, economically. So we need to figure out how we can get Hawaii down to a level playing field where our innovative companies are paying the same electricity bill as their counterparts on, on the mainland. So alternative energy is something we need to continue to, to really uh, think forward on. Absolutely, and, and considering solar is basically free for the taking once you invest in infrastructure, mm -hmm. and you're just using the sunlight. And uh, actually just a few weeks ago, I had a, uh, the, one of the founders of the whole ocean thermal energy conversion on here, and that was, that's an amazing system that he's worked out. And I guess they're getting ready to, to do a, a big pilot project on a substantial scale up in, or down in Kwajalein now uh, and no reason we shouldn't be doing that here. Uh -huh. Right and think about also although OTEC and Nelha on the Big Island was built for uh, ocean thermal energy conversion OTEC there's all kinds of collateral benefits that have popped up at, at Nelha mm -hmm. right because if you for, for your viewers right you, you bring the water up at 40 degrees you mix it with the surface water at 70 degrees that delta difference in temperature of 30 degrees helps create steam which helps create energy but we also found that you bring water up at 40 degrees from the bottom of the ocean, then you kind of fake out the fish, right? So now we're growing abalone, we can grow main lobster, we can grow cold environment crustaceans and mussels that we couldn't because our water. tropical environments are so warm, but we're pulling water from that depth and it, it fakes out the whatever we're, livestock we're trying to grow. And so we've had this collateral benefit of, of the beginnings of a. Uh, aquaculture I, industry there. I was hearing recently some, uh, they've, I guess, set up a test plot where they're running the cold piped water through the land and now growing temperate fruit trees. Right, right, right. And, again, and we're faking out the right, plants right. too. Like we're the yeah. fake capital of the world. <laughs> I mean, pretty soon we can pipe, bring it up and pretend huh. we're Iceland and make right. eagles or something out of, out of the cold water. Yeah, one of the beautiful things, uh, the OTEC ends up producing fresh water as a, as a sort of byproduct of the whole thing. Right, too, well, so. yeah, yeah that, that's actually, you're, you're right. absolutely right. Our number one export product is bottled reverse osmosis seawater. It's not Kona coffee, it's not macadamia nuts, it's not pineapple. Our number one export is bottled water. You're, really? you're absolutely right. And the state gets one penny off of each of those bottles of water that are mainly the uh, Japanese market uh, is a consumer huh. of that wow. water. Fascinating. Yeah, so I, right, I, you're right. I, I didn't that. So we faked out the vegetables, <laughs> we got uh, economic development uh -huh. through bottled water, and we're growing cold weather uh, crustaceans and mussels that yeah. we'd never had the opportunity yeah. Yeah. to have before. Wonderful, wonderful. So that, that's that's. Super. Wait, did we go through all of the A's? The no. other A was aerospace. Uh, aerospace. Oh, right. Aerospace. Another, going back to using our location as an advantage and not a disadvantage. Right. Hawaii should be ground zero for aerospace. Right. And even um, Trump today and his, his group that's looking at, his NASA group, has said that they want to position America to get to, back to the moon. And mm -hmm. if we're going to colonize the moon, uh, which is a huge leap, right? It's one thing to get there, so one th mm -hmm. another thing to live there. Mm -hmm. We're going to colonize the moon. Hawaii should be at the forefront of how are we going to prepare our astronauts for that huge undertaking, right? The moon, right. Mars-like terrain on the Big Island is a perfect spot. Absolutely. And right next to that area, perhaps in Pahakaloa, 
they're the best set of telescopes on on the on the planet. Exactly. There, and you have Imi Lo up in in Hilo, and you have the opportunity for uh, space uh, satellite, small satellite launches mm -hmm. off of the Big Island, uh, right? Because Hawaii is the most southernmost state in America, so we're the closest to the equator. And for you science folks that are watching, right, you, you're spinning faster at the equator than here at the North Pole, and therefore it takes less energy to jettison a satellite into orbit. And so Hawaii is in a unique position in America to be the launch spot for, for yeah. the planet. And here's kind of an interesting tidbit. Um, you know, when you and I were growing up, the space agency was NASA, and right. government also, Russia and Japan, Government were the leaders of space expenses and exploration. Right. The number one uh, per, uh, entity that sends rockets into space today is DirecTV. Mm -hmm. The private sector has taken over oh. the world of space. So we can get DirecTV and their competitors to go launch satellites off of the Big Island. More power for us. We have mm -hmm. another economic engine that goes into the aerospace arena. And I know the idea of space launches off of the Big Island brings up bad memories for some people, particularly in Pune. But we're not talking about your grandfather's rockets anymore, right? right? The Apollo, I mean, the, some seven, eight-story type rocket. We're talking about small space right. launches, so it's not going to be quite as impactful as what we saw in Cape Canaveral in the right. 1960s and, and 70s. Sure. So that is another area of uh, immense opportunity. Right, again, another, another asset that we have rather than a liability, basically. Right, and again, yeah. Where is our location right. and how is that to our advantage and how can we be the global leader in right. that area? Perfect. The last A is more provincial. Right. Um, it's Aloha Stadium and that is an area of 100, 100 acres which to me is an underutilized piece of property. Home right. to six UH football games, a smattering of foot, high school football games and a swap meet. Mm -hmm. We can do far better than that. 80% like of the time it's doing nothing in terms of bringing in mm -hmm. revenue. Why don't we go down the road of creating Aloha Stadium in that area as a destination. Similar if you're familiar with LA Live where there's a, the Staples Center and then there's a hawk, um, theaters, there's an ice rink, there's, there's retail, there's hotel. Mm -hmm. I mean, why can't we recreate something like that where we've created a dynamic destination, especially if the rail stop is going there. We don't want people to stop there for six UH games and pick up your, mm -hmm. your ukulele made in China from a swap me vendor there. We want you to go there, eat, get entertained there, maybe have work there, and maybe even live in that area. So if we're going to make rail a viable part of Hawaii's future, then I think part of it is to create uh, you know, density and smart growth around the rail stations. And, and of all of the spots that we have, that Aloha Stadium area is the biggest piece of state land that we can utilize to really make that a dynamic stop. Excellent. And we're going to dig into these issues in greater depth when we come back. Right now, we're going to have to take a short break. I'm here with Senator Glenn Wakai, and I'm your host, Ethan Allen, here on Likeable Science. I've got the Beagle Sisters here with a healthy tip. We encourage you to enjoy the food you eat this holiday season and keep it local and healthy. Yeah. Eat the rainbow. Eat yeah. the rainbow. And if you need any produce, come to the Red Barn on the North Shore. Aloha. This is Kili'i Akina with the weekly Ehana Kako. Let's work together program on the Think Tech Hawaii broadcast network. Mondays at 2 o'clock p.m. Movers and shakers and great ideas. Join us. We'll see you then. Aloha. Aloha, my name is Justine Espiritu, and I am the co-host of Hawaii Farmers Series. This is my co-host, Matthew Johnson, and we are live with you every Thursday at 4 p.m. at thinktechhawaii.com. And our show focuses on Hawaii's local food uh, community. We feature not only the farmers that are producing our food, but we also feature the supporters and other folks involved in the community that are trying to promote local agriculture. <laughs> And you're back here on Likeable Science. I'm your host, Ethan Allen. With me today in the Think Tech Studios is Senator Glenn Mackay. Happy to be here. And great to have you here. We've been talking about, about the four economic A's, uh, aerospace, aquaculture, alternative energy, and the Aloha Stadium. Yep. And we went over briefly at the start how these each could be uh, thought of as an, as an asset, another A here, mm -hmm. to Hawaii rather than a, than a liability. And why is it that Hawaii is ranked essentially the bottom of the states for sort of business friendliness 
well, everyone agrees we have an amazing quality of life here, right? You know what is so interesting is you're, you're absolutely right. You look at the CNBC reports and year after year, we're either 49th or rock bottom at number 50. But you look at those same uh, entities that create those polls and Hawaii is the number one quality of life spot in America. And so if, you, if we understand that people want to live here, but they're not making enough money, but they're willing to sacrifice this to be here, if we were to be able to, we always want to be number one. Right. We always want to be the best place in America to live. But if we can ratchet us up a few spots to, yeah, we would never be number one. Right. But if we could be in the 20s or maybe mm -hmm. low 30s, we dramatically change the quality of life for our, our people here. And to, so to get to that, as we started off at the outset, we really got to help lower the cost of living, mm -hmm. housing, reduce taxation, some of the impediments uh, uh, the government has placed in front of people to make a profit and at the same time raise the salaries and the quality of life for people here then all of a sudden we're in a very very sweet spot right and we, we've got a lot of the stuff sort of in place right I mean we have a, a great university sitting here that does amazing world-class research we have wonderful sort of informal learning centers the Bishop Museum mm -hmm. the Waikiki Aquarium those those sorts of things again can support uh, the kinds of development that, that we want to foster and yes then we can as you sort of put it, you, we can wean ourselves off the tourism industry and begin to build a much more sustainable, economically sustainable, uh, home, sort of homegrown, uh, mm -hmm. technology-based economy. Right. And, you know, to, but you might want to ask, how are we going to grow? How do we improve the business environment? Right. And just to, like, kind of set the stage of how little regard government gives to business development, our, our state budget is 14 billion, with a B, 14 billion dollars. The largest chunk of that is uh, education, which takes about 22.2 uh, .2 billion dollars uh, uh, of that, that budget. And economic development, or DBED, Department of Business, Economic Development and Tourism, gets a budget of 150 million dollars. So they have a minuscule amount of investment into growing the business environment, but we expect the business environment to pay for everything else that we need. The roads, the prisons, the schools, those are all losses for the state, right? There, there's no revenue opportunities in, in that arena. We need to have the business community give us the taxes necessary to provide government services. But you can see the way we budget our state um, resources, there's not enough uh, likable, like minds in, in the S Senate and the House to devote more of the state budget to economic development. Right. And I'm not a fan of digging deeper into people's pockets. I'd rather have the state create more pockets. Mm -hmm. But we, we have this weird situation where if there's a dime left on the table, that's going to go to human services or some other good government service. Mm -hmm. I'm a fan of, if there's a dime left on the table, let's go put it into economic development mm -hmm. initiatives and grow more pockets. Yeah, and it, I mean, it's a very tricky business, right? Because we can't shortchange our education system. You want to produce great, uh, great educational programs so that the, the Hawaii's kids grow up learning, or learning, learning mm -hmm. the learners, loving learning, yep. and, and better yet, being able to come back here for the economic opportunities instead of leaving, as many of them unfortunately do. They leave uh, for better, jobs, yeah. better positions elsewhere. We're the farm yeah. system for innovation in other states. <laughs> we have a yeah. net negative exodus of our best and, and brightest. And I was talking to a venture capitalist just the other day about just Hawaii's kind of schizophrenia in this area because, you know, we, we create some of the smartest and, and brightest people, right? The mm -hmm. Omidyars, the mm -hmm. Obamas of the world, mm -hmm. uh, the cases of the world, but they all had to make their millions uh, elsewhere but it shows you the talent pool that we have here and so if we know that we have smart talented innovative ambitious creative people here right. we got to create the mechanism for them to stay here right. i was told like in north dakota and i'm not meaning to bash people who might be from north dakota but you know you have north dakota montana up there the quality of life is is different but they don't they're not creating the innovators of, of the future so right. they can't they don't have step one to get to, to step 10 right. of having a vibrant, innovative e economy. Hawaii, we're at probably step three, but we're, we're not cashing in on the value added part. We're, we're educating smart people to high school, and then they're bailing, and some other state benefits from that talent pool that has 
been gone here. So we really have to make a concerted effort to uh, build up the opportunities for them here. Right. And again, it sort of goes hand in hand with the, the energy costs that you point out are, are just, just prohibitive for businesses. Mm -hmm. And there's no reason for it. I mean, there really isn't a reason for it. There's no reason we are bringing diesel fuel in from uh, around the world, basically, mm -hmm. and burning it here when we have perfectly, we, have, we are the best positioned state, basically, for solar energy in, in many, many respects, right? Mm -hmm. And the technologies mm -hmm. for solar are here with a little bit of extra incentive and investment. It's likely we could, we could shift to a, a truly a solar-based economy. That's, of course, uh, a goal of some groups here in Hawaii. And you know, suddenly our energy costs go way down, uh -huh. and that's more money in everyone else's pocket, right? Right, and yeah. we got to figure out the battery storage part as right. well, right? right? Because you know, we all know that solar provides us energy right. half the day, but we got to be able to right. store it somehow at, at right. night. But yeah, you, you pump water up and let it run down at night and generate from the, the flow of the water, you know, or whatever. Yes, battery storage is. There are lots of different interesting options. Mm -hmm. And again, that's, that's some real interesting frontiers here, I think, that, that we have to be willing to explore and be willing to sort of say, let's go and let's, let's put some serious time, serious money, serious minds into, into looking at this, mm -hmm. see if it'll work, see if we can make this scale up. Yep. You know? And we have this organization called the Hawaii Technology Development Corporation, mm -hmm. which is kind of leading the, the pathway on in that area. And they are focusing on three areas that are n necessary to grow this area, this this uh, part of our economy, and that's uh, through infrastructure, through workforce development, and through financing. We need all three legs of that stool to be stood up. And if I could briefly briefly talk about each sure. leg, infrastructure. That's the the broadband capacity, right? We mm -hmm. we, we got to join the rest of the world in faster and cheaper broadband here, um, and also the infrastructure of incubating. Uh, ideas. It's one thing to work out of a, a garage. It's another if you could take that idea from the garage and be given mentorship and grant opportunities to help grow that idea into mm -hmm. a sustainable right. business. So we have the infrastructure at the Manoa Innovation Center. We have the Maui Innovation Center that does the same thing. Uh, the other uh, leg of the stool is uh, workforce development. Um, and that's where we're working with the University of Hawaii, the colleges, even the Department of Education to have that, not just have STEM education, but have a really comprehensive pathway for a child to explore his uh, creativity in math and sciences and work that through right. the education system as well as through the college post-secondary education system and right. create a clear pathway to develop the workforce that we need. Right. And then the final leg of the stool is the finance part because right. we could have the best and brightest and the best ideas, but unless there's money to research it and ultimately test it before it goes commercial, mm -hmm. then we have great ideas that right. are not uh, monetizable. Right. So that finance part, the venture capital and the investment, state does a little bit, but we've learned that we need to bring in private money to match that. And all of a sudden, we have these three st stools that we're slowly getting up to, to speed on and will have the beginnings of creating a really innovative economy of the future. Yes, and, and it's uh, the sort of a question. It's, it's sort of almost a race here, right? I mean, it, we can't afford to just be sort of slowly step by step developing these. We really need to be moving ahead at a, a, a faster clip. Right. Uh, the world is moving on very quickly. The technologies are changing all the time, but technologies in, in sort of every uh, sphere here that we've been talking about. And we can't prepare our students for yesterday's jobs. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we have to really give them an education so and think for tomorrow. What, what, what are the skills that our businesses will need tomorrow? Right. Uh, and we in Hawaii need to be more forward thinking and uh, what makes Hawaii special is our, you know, our past, our culture, and and I'm not saying that we shouldn't hold on to that, but at the same token, we need to be more progressive in the way we look at things. I mean, the fact that one of the biggest legislative struggles we're going to have this year is figuring out how does Airbnb fit into our tourism landscape, right? We should be embracing that rather than trying to figure out how to keep them out and how to pin them down and penalize them. We should just say that they're part of our future and let's embrace it. Uh, even with Uber, that's right. another area where why should we stop Uber from competing with the taxi cab drivers? We've got to have the taxi cab drivers up their game, right. create their own apps, and compete with Uber. Uh, but it's, it's hard, right, when you're the, the vested interest that if I'm running a taxi company, I don't want uh, sure. apps to destroy my business. But that's the way of the future. Right. So you're either going to embrace it or you're going to get left behind. Right. And Hawaii, we kind of struggle sometimes in embracing the new world order. And 
we, we need to. Yeah, I mean, you, you, you don't see many buggy whip manufacturers anymore, right? No. You know, uh, it's, it's some, some industries just go by the wayside, and some models have to be periodically refreshed, replaced. Brand new things come on in, just disrupt the technology, disrupt the whole status quo. And yes, it's very tough. Um, we were talking about uh, artificial intelligence and its, its potential impacts, and it is going to disrupt things, and it always sort of does. And how do you take care of the people who sort of get left behind when their jobs get automated away from them, basically? And again, the state has to take some responsibility to invest in their training and their retraining to new careers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's, a, it's many challenges here. Well, this has been a wonderful. It's been a very rich discussion. I've enjoyed talking with you so much. Thank you. We have, uh, we've, we've covered, I think, some good ground, and, and it's nice to see bright, hope, hopeful people like yourself uh, working so hard for, for our good. Well, it's great that people are interested in technology because yeah. that's going to be the, the, the future. The fact that you have a show like this that spreads the good word about opportunities uh, is a sign that Hawaii is, is slowly but surely embracing <laughs> the idea of technology for its future. Excellent. Well, Senator uh, Wakai, thank you so much. Oh, thanks for having me. Aloha. Aloha. Hope to join us next week back here on Likeable Science.